adventure film titled Triple Frontier. So sit back, relax and enjoy the video. The movie begins with a whirring sound of a police helicopter emerging through the rural part of South America. Santiago, a cunning sharpshooter policeman has a mission to comply with to track down and hunt some of the drug lord squad, hiding in the bleak apartment, and also to get some information about Gabriel Martin Loria, their wealthy leader. With that, he cocks gun and throws a blast that rips through the hideout of Loria squad. Then, Santiago and his armed police officers catch some of Loria people with the police intimidating and threatening them to squeeze out the information about Loria whereabouts. Finally, one of the prisoners broke his silence, saying their boss was hiding somewhere in the jungle since he doesn't trust banks. So it is a cracking code that maybe Loria is hiding his wealth in his house. The rest of the captive prisoners are being held by the armed policemen until a woman breaks loose from her chain and escapes from the hands of the police. Santiago and his team run as fast as they can to catch the woman but she's too fast and is able to lose her trail. The woman who escaped is actually Santiago's informant. They have a deal wherein he is to free the informant's brother in prison in exchange for spilling Loria location and his money since she works for him by delivering vans full of cash to Loria house in the jungle. She said that Loria hides his money in the wilderness only to emphasize that the house is the safe. She also advises Santiago, a man she has feelings for, that his team is a traitor and they're watching his tail. After knowing this, he devises a plan to create a trusted team for the heist and make Laura pay. With the first person on his mind, he meets with retired captain, William Miller planning to lure Redfly, aka Tom for their mission, and so he tracks down his old pal next, Redfly, a former armed officer but now a realtor with a complicated family relationship and financial issues. Redfly along with Santiago drives his daughter Tess to school. Santiago discusses the plan of talking to the agency and making a deal that they will keep 25% of any money they seize. He estimates that there are $75 million in cash in Loria's safe house, which is a lot of money to swim with. He had always been planning seriously on the mission to heist Loria money. He even got a lawyer and trusted agents to back them up but Redfly is unsure whether to join them due to its risks. After the encounter with Redfly, he offers Benny and Catfish to join their heist since he knows that he cannot do this without such strong, cunning and trusted agents. Throughout Benny's fighting match, Redfly surprises them with his sudden appearance. He then discusses their entry plan. First, he already made them passports. Second, they will go through immigration as powerline consultants. Lastly, they'll be like maniac ghosts since there are no facial recognition cameras in the area. Hearing the plan, Redfly finally decides to join their money heist. And so the team drives to the jungle up to Loria Mansion to inspect, hide in the bush and analyze their possibilities to enter and seize the moment. They discover that Loria family goes to church every Sunday and sends three guards to the 6A, M service. When they get back, he then sends the rest of his team, along with his family, to get into the town and have mass, which only leaves him and the three guards of the house. He is afraid to leave his money and his kids, so he sends many of them. Following that, their come-up plan runs smoothly, and they see Santiago's informant in the van, who the team thinks is beautiful, teasing him a little bit and hoping for their romantic affinity. The informant then comes face to face with Loria to sign a shipment. Later that night, while the money heist gang is resting and drinking their beers, something comes up. They start to doubt the mission and discover that Santiago framed them, but not as a betrayal or self-motive agenda. They realize that what they're doing is illegal in a money heist with no backup. Santiago only desires to steal Loria money, to be rich and take what they deserve more than just arresting and catching prisoners without such honorable mention and appreciation as they fix and beat up the injustices. Meanwhile, Santiago and the informant had a clandestine meeting. He offers one last thing to his beautiful informant and that is to get him an extra van into the compound on a Sunday morning. He needs that van inside the gate and promises to pay the informant $2 million as an incentive to free her brother. The Western Money Heist Gang arrives on a rainy Sunday morning, where they first hide in the bush. The informant then successfully enters her van inside the gate, where the team is eager to push through the plan on a rainy morning. Benny comes to inspect and unlock the gate. Seeing this, the informant then leaves them with their mission. The Money Heist Game goes inside the mansion and roams around. When they see some of Gloria's armed guards, they quickly kill them like cockroaches. They professionally shoot them down, cocking and blasting their guns, raiding and capturing some of his people. Along the way, they were also trying to trace and search Loria, but he was not yet to be seen. Following that, they need to secure and hope that everyone is shut down so they can seize everything. Redfly orders his friends to come with him to the office as soon as possible. On the other hand, Santiago breaks down the flimsy paper-like wall. To their surprise, behind it is Loria millions of money. It is true indeed that the house is the safe. With such exhilarating serotonin, they take their bags seize any money they can get and quickly hide it in their van. They then scrape every flimsy wall to steal the money. With every scrape on the wall or excitement and an act of being too greedy, craving a million dollar life. 
With their ravenous heist on the money, the time is running out, and they must pack their things before Loria family and guards come home. But then Redfly is too overpowered by his creed and wants to load more money, while Santiago is aiming for revenge on Loria, a perpetrator of injustice, by wanting to burn his money, house, and name. While they were roaming and spreading the gasoline to burn down the house, a secret cabinet slowly creaked open to yet another surprise, Loria is hiding there with his money and gun. He tries to aim his position and shower bullets in the room. Still, the money heist gang is so flexible and more attentive that one of them quickly shoots Loria and kills him. Unfortunately, William aka Iron Head, is hit by Loria bullet. However, he is still in the game due to being solid and durable. They then kill the remaining guards and load up the fiery gasoline to burn the house grinningly. The fire quickly spreads out, and they leave the mansion soon. As they head out, the money heist gang sees Loria family in a car. They let it slide, quickly drove, and headed to the compound where a whirring helicopter was waiting. As they are in a hurry, a tumultuous helicopter approaches, and they have to store the 6,000 pound money they've stolen for a total of 250 million dollars in cash. But the helicopter can only carry fewer pounds, so the weight issue is a problem. But they can't just leave 20 million dollars on the runway, so they get along with their stolen treasure and make amends. They also drive the informant and her brother somewhere. Santiago gives them their passport to fly to Sydney, Australia, and $3 million to start a new life. He advises the informant to stay safe and away from South America because they might kill her. He favors his informant that when they reach the airport, they should stop at a specific shipping company and make sure to send the boxes to the hotel in Sydney. The two end their communication in a bittersweet parting of ways. Sadly, the informant never knew about his name or where she will ever see him again. Later, their helicopter's loud and notorious whirring and rattling wake them up. They realize they're in the middle of a winter isle. It feels like escaping is harder than stealing Loria money, and it is after the mission that barricades their brotherhood dreams. The engine suddenly sputters, leaving them no choice but to unload some of their cash bags or else they will die. Ben tries to pull the lever, but it doesn't work. Benny then goes down for a while to poke the sack net of cash bags which surprisingly works, but it pays in danger. The helicopter then stirs and crashes with the rest of them. They land somewhere on an agricultural farm with their money bags landing in the middle of it. Seeming like they couldn't get unlucky, another problem arises with people residing on the farm claiming that they now own the money since it crashed on their land. The money heist game persuades them that Redfly has no chill. He is in a rage and showers bullets that kill the farmers and residents who come near their money. People were screaming and anxious to get closer to the gang because of what he had done. The residents can only grieve over the bodies that have been killed. On behalf of Redfly impulsive action, the gang then offers forgiveness to their community captain by giving some of their money and ordering him to send some cash to the grieving families. While walking with the mules they bought from the community captain, they see a young boy looking at them with a grinning vengeance. The father of that young boy had been caught in Redfly bullet shower and is grieving his father's death. The gang continues to escape and happens to pass by a forest and sleeps for just a night. The morning comes, and they are bound to a rocky mountain. One of their mules falls with their cash back due to the steep rocky mountain. Seeing the dangers of where they're going, they free their mules and can only bring themselves in their hundreds of cashbacks. With dawn falling on them, the shivering cold prompts them to burn some of their money to make a fire. As the morning comes with few cashbacks left, the sound of a gun surprises the whole gang. The guns ricochet through the rocks with no targets and show to be a sign of threat to the gang. They quickly spread out to catch the hiding shooters and find out that one of them is a teenage boy holding and cocking his gun. Redfly lock his weapon on the teenage boy, holds his ground and unleashes a one-shot on the kid. It happens smoothly and feels like a victorious shot, ceasing the possible dangers. But then as he looks back he sees the kid that once looked at them with such vengeance, locking his aim on Redfly, a man who had killed a dozen of his people. The young boy aims his gun and shoots straight at the target, but the boy is also shot down, resulting in a loud bang from Santiago's gun. Seeing that Redfly, aka Tom, has been killed, his friends mourn and cry for him. They never expected that their friend along with this mission would be killed. For what happens to them, Santiago the gang leader encourages them to continue with their plan because Redfly deserves the money, his family deserves the money, and they deserve the money. So with that, they also bring Redfly dead body and their cash back as they walk to a snowy mountain. They, fortunately, have a backup boat, but they are five days late, wondering if the boat is still waiting for them. Benny leaves them for a while and takes the mission to go through the boat and inspect some routes, a critical approach for their smooth escape plan. He returns to his friends and gives some information, telling them that the boat still waits for them, which is a lucky approach in the end. Benny didn't go to the town because there were a bunch of armed kindergartens, and one of their enemies exploited 20 heavily armed kids waiting to kill Santiago and the rest. However, William interferes that he didn't go on this mission to kill children just for their money cargo. 
she pursues a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Santiago, discussing their own choices and what their choices have done consequently to them. They have 100 money bags and need to let them go because they can't leave Redfly dead body in the middle of nowhere. With that, they eventually choose brotherhood and a bond within a strong friendship over money. They bring their money back and throw the rest of them into the cliff. As they approach a town with heavily armed teenagers, Benny looks for their boat, with the rest secretly passing by the town. A heavily armed teenage boy passes by, but they don't have the intention of killing him. Santiago and his friends steal the kid's car and use it to easily go to the beach, where Benny drives the boat. But as soon as they leave the kid, a group of teenagers riding in their car interferes. The gang is left with no choice but to shoot and drive furiously. A group of armed teenagers follows them, but the gang outwits them and finally heads to the beach. Santiago and his friends successfully go to the beach and find Benny. They exhaustingly sail away and prepares themselves to start a new life and live with the consequences of the choices that they've made. Thus, they may have left a lot of money bags, but they brought each one for them. They have only brought $5,334,210, and when they caught five shares, they have $1,066,824 each. The movie ends with a lawyer needing their signatures on a deal deposited contract for Redfly Family Trust. All of them sign, although all they have done for this mission might have ended nothing for them but end something peacefully with Redfly Family. For more videos, please like, share, and subscribe.